Assalamu alaikum. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. May Allah bless your little one. MashaAllah, you've got a son or a daughter. My brother, my sister. May Allah make this child of yours the coolness of your eyes. May Allah use this child to serve a good cause, a cause that is pleasing to him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect this child from every evil. May Allah grant this child the best of this world and the next. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the doors of this child in a way that it is blessed tremendously. May Allah make this child a means of entry of its parents to Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you and all your loved ones and make this child a shining light in your lives. I mean, you have to choose a name. What type of a name should we choose? Well, you need to bear in mind that on the day of judgment, Allah is going to use the same name to refer to the child. So you have to have a name that's good. You're going to be proud of that name in front of Allah. That's what I would look at first. Secondly, who are my role models, my heroes? Who are those who have shown the obedience of Allah? Who are those who I really feel this child needs to emulate? That's not a bad starting point. Does the name have to be Arabic? Well, I can tell you most of the scholars say it's preferred to be Arabic, but it's not necessary. It's not compulsory. You could have an English name. You could have a Farsi Persian name. You could have an Urdu name. You could have a, uh, you know, a name of another language. Subhanallah. You could for as long as it has a beautiful meaning, but it is still preferred to have an Arabic name. Now, one might say, why the preference? Well, I tell you, if you give your child a beautiful Arabic name, one of the companions of the Prophet or Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or uh, one of the Prophets or according to a lot of the scholars, even one of the angels. You know, some scholars say you shouldn't keep names of angels, but it is permissible. I adopt the opinion that says it's allowed. So Jibril or Mikail, I know people with these names, subhanAllah, uh, for as long as it's not, uh, you know, the angel of death, I think it's fine. May Allah grant us ease. May Allah open our doors. But if it's, uh, you know, Jibril, Mikail, etc., I think it's good. It's okay. So if you have one of those names, subhanAllah, with a good meaning, and say, for example, you've kept your child's name, uh, just let me just say something. For example, Talha. Talha. Now, we have a little bit of an issue when it comes to choosing these names because I live in an environment. In that environment, certain languages are spoken. I need to bear in mind, will these people pronounce that particular name? That's a proper pointer. So I told you, look at the heroes, look at uh, so-and-so, the Arabic language perhaps, but make sure that the name is not a name that will not be pronounced properly by those are, who are going to be calling the person. You know, Palha is a beautiful name. You will have a lot of people who may be able, who may be able to use that name and say it. I would, you would, a lot of people would. Palha. Palha is the proper pronunciation. Hamza. Hamza is the proper pronunciation. Hamza. It starts with a ha, it has a meme, zai, and it has a tamarbuta at the end. So Hamza. In fact, a ha at the end, right? So Hamza. Now, people are going to say Hamza, Hamza, right? I'm sure you've heard that. People are going to say Talha, Talha. Some might say Tala. I've heard people say Tala in the UK. And then, subhanAllah, it's up to you to correct them all the time. So I would advise you to choose a name that in your environment, those who are going to call the child would not mispronounce it in a way that the meaning is going to change. If I say Tala, for example, uh, who knows what it means? Subhanallah. But correct them. And inshallah, it won't be such a bad meaning, even if they had to mispronounce. But sometimes, sometimes the meanings become terrible. And secondly, another thing you must bear in mind is don't ever use a name in a language that's not the predominant language in your midst and it sounds so bad if it were to be within your language. There are names like that. So sometimes, you know, people have swear words in one language and in the Arabic language, it's not a swear word. 
But you name your child that and that child is going to be demonized throughout his or her life because you didn't think. And that's why when you are choosing a name, say it a few times, say it many times, ask people to say it, your family members to say the name, listen to it carefully and make sure that you're okay with it. Make sure it doesn't sound like a bad word in another language. Subhanallah, even organizations, I've come across organizations that have named themselves such names that if they were to be uh, looked at in English, it would be a huge swear word. A'udhu billah, but may Allah protect us. They didn't think, they thought, well, we're supposed to be having this Arabic name, but you're living in an English environment. The children at school are going to be swearing all day, calling your child. Come on, you owe the child a good name. Come on. So it's very difficult. It's really uh, something you need to consider. It's not just pick it up and that's it. No, you need to consider, especially when they are exotic names of today. Think, think very carefully. So keep a simple name, you know, in a way that people would not uh, mispronounce it, number one badly mispronounced and secondly is it wouldn't have a wrong meaning in another language if you knew those languages especially predominant language I'll give you an example the name ariana or Ariane, for example a beautiful name it's persian it's persian but if you were to translate it into arabic it has a very bad meaning so Ariane would mean a person who's nude Ariana would mean the same. That's just an example. And there are so many other names. Now, yes, while it is a good name, you will have to keep correcting people, especially if you're living in the Middle East. That's what it is. If you're living in the Middle East, people are speaking, they speak Arabic, they will get a shock. You know, the name Nada is a beautiful name. But in some languages, some languages, it may have a bad meaning, subhanAllah. So if you're living in an environment where they don't speak that language, where they have a bad, it has a bad meaning, it's fine, fair and good. But if it does, please don't penalize your child. And this is, these are just simple examples, okay? Now, my brothers and sisters, a name should have a good meaning. The Prophet ﷺ, did he change names of people who converted or reverted to Islam? The answer is, no, besides very few, if they had terrible meanings. He didn't change anyone's name. Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, Ali, you know, all of these people, radiallahu anhum, those were their names when they were enemies of Islam, or some of them were not enemies of Islam, but before Islam. So subhanAllah, the names did not change unless they had a bad meaning. So do you have to change your name if you were to revert to Islam? The answer is no. If you have had a meaning, uh, you know, good meaning, and so on. No, but the ulama recommend it. Scholars recommend it simply because it's an identity. I was telling you, your child is born. You've given your child a beautiful name. I used, for example, Talha. And you passed away two weeks later or a little while later when the child was in its infancy, maybe adopted by someone, maybe a certain path and so on. And the name is Talha. That name is an identity. The child is going to look for the meaning is going to understand as soon as anyone hears the name Khalid, as soon as anyone hears the name, for example, uh, Ayyub instead of Job, as soon as anyone hears the name, for example, Muhammad, uh, they would know this person is primarily a Muslim born to Muslims and so on uh, in 99.9% .9 of cases or even more. Subhanallah. So amazing. Amazing. And this is why it's very important that identity. Number one, like I said, Allah is going to call the person with that name. And thereafter, you would have a lot of other factors to consider. A lot of other factors to consider. And uh, like I said, my brothers and sisters, you don't have to change your name unless it has a bad meaning. If at some point you find out that your name has a bad meaning or you're embarrassed by what it may mean in another language, you have every right to change it later on in your life. No problem. There is permissibility to change your name later on in your life if you are not satisfied with the name that your parents gave you. Remember that. So I thought I'd just give you a few quick tips. And I'm so sorry for anyone whose names happen to be some of those names we said. I know one of my neighbors is called Talha. What a lovely guy. May Allah bless him. Uh, but at the same time, the examples I've given are just to ponder. It's something that just came to my mind, you know, uh, nothing in particular. MashaAllah. So my brothers and sisters, remember this 
And inshallah, when you're naming your child, give them a good name, something simple, easily pronounced. You know, if you're going to keep the child's name so difficult to pronounce in such difficult Arabic, nobody's going to say that name. They're going to give the child a nickname that the child won't like. If you don't want a nickname, don't respond to it. If you don't want a nickname, don't respond to it. That's it. And correct the people every time they say it wrongly and they will get it right. So if your name is something... Uh, you would actually, you know, something really, really difficult. You would need to correct people. Uh, it has happened to me a few times. Anyway, these were just a few tips, nothing hard and fast. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us and grant us children who will be the coolness of our eyes. I mean, those who don't have children, mashallah, at least you can contribute towards others naming their kids, inshallah. <laughs> Reminds me, may Allah bless you guys with children, those who don't have children. That's something serious. I always make that dua. But before I go, whose right is it? to name the child? The answer is simple, the parents. Simple. No two ways. Father and mother. That's it. They have the right. Not the uncle, not the aunt, not the grandfather, not the parents, not the community, not everyone, not the tribe. No. The right belongs to the father and mother. That's it. Between them, they must come up with a good name. Subhanallah. Now, if they want to give that right to someone willingly, willingly, then Alhamdulillah, they may do that. So some in some cultures, they say, okay, I'll allow the aunt to give the name. Or they say, okay, can you name the child, give a name? You know, people ask me, can you name our child? And I say, you won't like the names I choose, you know? And what I normally say is pick five names and I might help you select one of the five from those which you like. Because I like different names, you like different names. It's okay. Does it have to be a name of a companion? No, it doesn't. But it's good to name the child one of the names of the companions. One might say, well, which are the best names? Well, the Prophet ﷺ answered that question for you. Which are the best names? Those that are most loved by Allah. Guess what he says? Ahabbul asma'i ilallah, Abdullahi wa Abdul Rahman. Subhanallah. Abdullah and Abdul Rahman. The worshipper of Allah, the worshipper of the most merciful. Those are the two best names. Most loved by Allah. That's what it is. Now, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu his name was Muhammad. Doesn't mean Allah doesn't love it. But Allah says, Muhammad himself named one of his children Abdullahi. So that's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, my beloved brothers and sisters, may Allah love us all and grant us goodness. I hope this helped you, guided you a little bit as to how to name your kids or what to do and a little bit more about naming and names. Uh, keep them good names, inshallah. Keep them names with very, very good meanings. Preferably, like I said, the Arabic language, beautiful names. If not, alhamdulillah, even if it is another language, it's okay. It's not prohibited for as long as it has a good meaning and it's within the obedience of Allah. You know, you can't say, you can't call someone devil. Okay, I know as a nickname, some people might. Some people call their children devil. Actually, just say you're a little devil. You know, I hope you don't mean it. And even if, even jokingly, don't do that. It's not healthy. Uh, call them by their beautiful names. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. Aqulu qawli hadha wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.